Hello everyone, I'm back again with a bunch of theories, I guess. Don't know why I'm singing Adventure Time, then I'm have all one and wearing a Steven Universe shirt. So technically I guess I'm just going with many other things. Nightmare Theory Time! I'm an idiot. Yes, I am. Oh, well, my name's Fox, right? So, hey, I'm Nightmare Fox, and we're going to do a nine bit theory time. Uh, <laughs> dang, did I actually make that loud of a sound effect? No, it didn't. Okay, I just hit myself for no freaking reason. I am an idiot, and I really did hurt with <laughs> But, um, gosh dang it. Mm. But, uh, I have a headache now. <laughs> um, this is a little bit of a... I don't know, would this really be considered a theory? I don't know. This is more my thoughts a little bit, because ever since... I don't know, freaking know. Uh, Star... Well, one, if anyone's seen any of my Star Wars Wars Evil reviews and some of my theories, maybe, um, you kind of know I like Jackie. I do like Jackie, and I even like him in the Blood Moon Theory video. I'm kind of saying, Jackie is kind of perfect for Marco. But then as... The episodes kind of kept going. I kind of startling like, okay, um, I understand when puzzle pieces kind of fit together and, you know, perfect match. This puzzle piece, though, it's kind of like someone put Play-Doh and just like, like smushed it into every crevice. Like, there is nothing wrong. These, there is a perfect imprint of this thing having to be part of this. Kind of, I don't know. That was a terrible analogy. Okay. Basically, I'm trying to say is, Jackie seems a little too nice, <laughs> and it scares me. Because I feel like we might have a Hans situation going on with her. And the thing that's, and the thing, and, well, um, Hans from Frozen, is, is the name Hans from Frozen? I don't, I think the first, last time I watched that movie in full was when I saw it in theaters, and like, this movie's awesome. And apparently the entire world did. And I'm still seeing merchandise for it till this day. And that was... That was what? 2013? 12? 13? My lord! Disney knows how to milk a thing. Jeebus! Um, but... Anyways. I doubt Moana's gonna get that long-lasting merchandising. Um, that's why I get the hook. Uh, though you can't... Oh, no, yeah, you can see it. I think... Why am I saying stop it? All right, so um, the, the, the way this is coming, where this is coming from is one back in the naysayer where like Marco basically vents out every last little dirty secret that he ever has to Jackie. And again, I'm saying every little dirty secret, and like, the naysayer would not go away unless he said every last little thing. So that means he talked about his internet history. He talked about. Those thoughts in his head he had with Jackie at some point. Um, probably talking a little times alone in the... No, stop. Uh, <laughs> ah, I don't want to I don't keep going on that train of thought. But still, he's th told about her every little last little dirty little secret that he has to Jackie. And Jackie said, sure, I'll date you. Which one, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this girl is so cool. That she's like perfect for him, and then even the episode following that with Bon Bon or whatever, that still continued. Like, oh my gosh, these two are freaking like perfect for each other. It's awesome. And then you kind of keep on rolling a bit, and then you head to what do you call it? Um, the concert episode, and that one is just like star. Like that episode more or less made me feel more like, uh, this girl, she's understanding. A little too understanding. And I'm kind of hoping she's not going to fall into, like, yeah, she dated Marco because it was a dare or some crap like that. I really hope she's not that kind of character. But the thing is, she feels too understanding. Too understanding. And it's kind of weird. I, I, I need to explain this somehow. It's like, Again, like, Marco's, like, <clears throat> like, you know, almost dying. He's wearing this super tight shirt. He breaks the board and stuff. He's, like, basically shows himself being the ultimate loser in that episode. I'm sorry. 
a live chat Marco who was happy after Star left. Apparently, I didn't see the live chat, but I saw um, a fan art of it, and I'm just, and fan art of like, let's go make a live chat of how Star left, and I'm, I'm just like, really Disney, you had to do that? You can just have. It would be kind of funny if the live chat really was just Marco and fit, Star fan, whatever the fudge is. <laughs> Just constantly crying the entire time. <laughs> and just saying everything while crying. That would have been hilarious. Ah, uh, but, um... Trying to think, trying to think, trying to think, think, think. But, like, again, like, everything that kind of happened, it kind of felt, like, weird. And it felt awkward in a lot of points. Because, again, it's like, Star was kind of the third wheel in this scenario, but... The difference being that, like, again, like, I always praise Steven Universe for being, like, you know, takes those common cartoon tropes and flips it on its head. Steven goes to the past to help, st help his dad, you know, stop his dad from doing this thing that'll, at, that'll, like, you know, stop him from going to the beach festival. Makes it worse. He's like, screw that. I'm just going to go to the past and grab my past self and we're going to make a band of our own. It's just kind of like that. Like, you just flip it on your head. And in this one, it kind of does the same thing. Star does kind of do the same thing. Instead of it being Jackie and Mark, Jackie and Marco kind of had a date, and then Star's like, you know, let's tag along. No. Star is literally making the... It's the opposite. Star's going, hey, Marco, I got us some tickets. And I also called Jackie to call over because, you know, I want to support you. You're my best friend. I want to support you. And that, and it's, and it's awkward, but it's also kind of like, yeah, Star, Star's like, okay, yeah, we're not together, but she makes him happy, so let me help him. It's not, yeah, I like you, so I'm going to be the third wheel on this, this roller coaster. No, even though it kind of has a similar tone to it, it's still a little bit flipped on its head. And then that, that, that episode, like, that episode totally made me shit Marco and Star, basically, at that point. Because I'm like, my problem with, like, Bon Bon Circus Clown or anything else past them is, like, Marco and Star never really had any chemistry. Maybe a little bit of the Blood Moon Ball, but other than that, there really wasn't much chemistry. It was more, Star did something, Marco reacted to it angrily, or not angrily, but, you know, reacted to it being scared, but... Now you kind of see more of that. E even, like, after, like, the whole Hecapu incident, that's that's more, like, Star's lust for him. But after that, you know, it, you, after, like, the sort of concert, you at least get more chemistry, especially when, like, they start singing together. It's our, it's, <laughs> freaking love. That's a, that's a really nice scene. And then, you know, like, it's... Any, it's basically like... Every time you see Marco and Star together, like, you know, in that episode or whatever, and talking or whatever, it always feels like they try to constantly keep the camera off of Jackie and then have Jackie walk in smiling and understanding. It's weird. Because in any other type of story or scenario, or a cliched way, it would be you see the two main characters who are supposed to fall in love, kind of, you know had their moment together that kind of builds up a bit of chemistry, I guess. And then you would cut to the actual girlfriend or the other one, the other one, and then you, like, you know, the one that the main, this character is not actually supposed to be with, but it's supposed to be, you know, with this character, kind of cut to them and see them either get jealous or angry. But we never get that. We always get camera, star and Marco, Jackie is off on the side. We don't know if she saw them dancing and singing together. We don't know if they if she saw what they were doing then. It's it's that kind of weirdness that that puts me on edge. It's just like, okay, we're not getting Jackie's reaction to this. And even then, um, like at the party of uh, at the end of the season finale and the season finale, whatever, we never get Jackie's reaction to this. Until, like, the only time we ever get, like, Jackie's full reaction to something that Star and Marco are doing together is is when Star says, I do have a crush on, I do have a crush on you. That is the only time that we get Jackie's reaction, and it's mouth open, just like, 
like that. And Janna's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I love Janna too. She's freaking awesome. Uh, but, and it's like, that was the, and again, like, it's kind of like, and Marco running after Star, it's then like, what is Jackie's reaction after that? What is the reaction coming off of that? And that's what puts me on ease so much. Or off ease or on, 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 on edge. On edge. Puts me on edge so much is that. It puts me off because it's like, we never see Jackie. For all we know, like, um, Jackie grabbing Marco's hand and saying, Woo, dance with me! That is basically her, like, she saw the, these two kind of, you know, making eyes at each other. And she's like, Jackie's like, no, this is my boyfriend. And so they dance there. Yeah, I understand if she's like, yeah, he's with me right now. Or she's with me right now. Whatever. They're with, he's with me right now. Stop it. <laughs> I understand that. Because, again, it's not like Marco's single and, like, the two girls are fighting over Marco. No. Jackie and Marco are a thing. And Star is kind of being the home wrecker in that scenario. I'm sorry for all you Starco fans out there. Again, I'm kind of shipping this too. But still, at at that point, she is kind of the home wrecker. <laughs> um But yeah, I it again, it puts you off ease of how understanding Jackie is. Cause it's like, I don't know, it's just she is so nice and so good that it's just like, you're too, it's, it's the whole, you hear that? It's quiet. Too quiet. It's kind of like that. It's like, she's nice. Too nice. Like, honestly, like, my prediction, my prediction for this series is Marco and Star are probably going to get together. And that's, that's probably what's going to happen. One... Even if that is a cliche, you know, oh, the male main character and the female main character get together. Cliche. Cliche at the wazoo. But, I will say at least, they're at least giving a, a better love triangle than most other stories have written some of them. Like, oh, I don't know, Twilight? Um, yeah, there is a better love triangle in this with Jackie, Marco, and Star. Heck, you mean like the whole jealous boyfriend thing? It's kind of like the opposite of Twilight if you really think about it. Because even the whole like, you know, Marco and Tom trying to go for Star, which again, Marco kind of wasn't doing that. He, um, Tom, even Tom at the end is like, Tom at the end is like, yeah, me and Marco are buds. <laughs> we hate each other. We're friend, we're friend enemies. That's a Disney word. We're frenemies, but we're frenemies. You know, I don't, I'm not going to try to kill him. We're cool now. Um, but now it's kind of like Jackie is that Tom, but we never see her outburst and ra rage or get angry. So what I feel is going to happen for my prediction of this of this series is going to be Star and Mark are going to get together. And again, I'm perfectly fine with that because it's been a bumpy road. And as long as it's written well, the cliche at the end can work fine. Um, Batman... Bat, Lego Batman movie, they had the whole scene, I have a scene at one point where it's like, go, be free, go, you know, the whole, like, sending your dog away crap, or, like, the, the wild animal out into the wild, they have that scene, by the way, it gets me almost every time, though, especially in Wander Over Yonder, oh, I'm so sad, hater, but, <laughs> flashbacks, ah, oh, jeez, <laughs> shout out to the Hedgehog, it's one of my favorite characters, why, it's because of all the flashbacks, <laughs> I'm an idiot, Ah! Stop! Ow, my brain! <laughs> this is just me in pain in this episode, isn't it? Um, but... I feel like Star and Marco are going to get together. And Tom and Jackie are going to get together. Because if Jackie is so happy to be this understanding... And like, you know, says like, you shouldn't really change... Tom would be kind of the perfect fit. Because, you know, he probably doesn't really want to change. And, like, he has trouble changing. So it's kind of like, you know, Jackie's really understanding. He's kind of really angry and no one really understands him. Boom. Perfect match. Kind of, I guess. And it'll also be kind of an awesome opposite dynamic to Star and Marco since it's kind of like the opposite. Just, I don't know. It's, that's really, uh, I feel like, I don't know, that kind of actually feels 
kind of off now that I have to say it out loud. So, but I don't know. That's at least a prediction that maybe that's who Jackie will end up with. And, you know, Star and Mark are going to end up together. Um, I don't know. Unless they're going to pull, like, a twist at the end. Like, like, I don't know. It's not really a twist, but, like, Harry Potter, like, they had, like... Like, I found out in the end, spoiler alert for Harry Potter if you haven't seen it yet. He gets... Um, Harry gets with um, Ron's sister. And I'm just like, who's Ron's sister again? And I'm like, oh, she that chick got taken by the giant snake in the second movie? They're a thing? And then Hermione got with Ron, like, they're a thing? What the fudge did I miss? Like, I stopped before the Half-Blood Prince. I don't know, I don't know, I sh maybe I should rewatch the one before the Half-Blood Prince, but I don't remember Harry and sister like that in, like, the last two, or technically three movies. <sighs> After that, it's like, they kind of put them together, like, really? I always saw Hermione and Harry kind of getting together. Maybe, yeah, cliche, but still, that's kind of how I saw that going. I'm, her going with Ron kind of seemed kind of out of left field. It's kind of like, this is kind of like Hermione just went like, that was basically like in the end, like, um, like, Hermione had her chance. Or Harry had her ch his chance. Didn't work out. Went with the second, <laughs> the second runner-up. And they even bring that up in the movie, so it's kind of sad. But, no, but, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's hard. Yeah, but anyways, I'm going off topic. That's my thoughts on that. Jackie's a little too nice, and we never really get her reactions towards these things. And even when it does happen, it also seems to kind of break things up a bit. Like, you know, Star and Mark were singing together, but then Jackie kind of, you know, pulled up to dance or whatever, something like that. I may probably have those events mixed up, but you, you get the idea. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you more videos I've done, link description below. Links, you know, around me. Subscription buttons around here somewhere. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please share all my videos. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. We can still see Star Janet. Well, I don't know. I'm going to do one more Star Wars video for tonight, and then, I don't know, I'll probably make some more later on. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the videos, and we will. See you later.